Welcome to Lesson 8B, the Request Lifecycle in MVC. Every time a page is requested using the ASP.NET MVC framework, it must complete a Request Lifecycle. The ASP.NET MVC framework uses a routing table to determine how the request should be handled. When you create an MVC application, routing is automatically enabled in the global.asax.cs file. The route is used to determine which controller and action should be used to process the request. Once the appropriate controller is identified, the request is executed by the controller. The controller validates the user input and delegates execution to the model. The controller then determines which view to return to the user. The view in turn displays the information returned from the model by sending a response back to the browser. The model is made up of classes that define the data objects and the business logic for the web application. The classes used to define the model are stored in the models folder. Another factor to take into consideration in the lifecycle of a request is the HTTP verb associated with that request. The most commonly used HTTP verbs are HTTP GET and HTTP POST. An HTTP GET occurs when a page is first requested and an HTTP POST occurs when a page with an HTML form is submitted. The action method in the controller can be decorated with the accept verbs attribute to designate one or more HTTP verbs that are associated with the request. In this lesson, you explore the request lifecycle for an ASP.NET MVC2 web application. You create a very simple model that will be accessed by the controller to update a view, and you experience firsthand how updating the request URL affects the routing of the request. There are no lesson requirements, and the hint for this lesson is to use the less than percent colon percent greater than code block to HTML encode any data entered by the user. To start this lesson, select New Project, ASP.NET MVC2 Web Application, and enter Lesson 8B for the name of the lesson and click the OK button. First thing we're going to do is add our model. So go ahead and add a class named math.cs. To add our math class, it's a really simple class. All it does is returns, it has one method, square, and that returns a value times value. Now that we have our model, we can work on our controller. So open up the home controller and go to the about action method. And in the about action method, add a parameter of ID and set the message that is part of the view data to equal basically the value that the math square method returns when you submit that ID value. And we're just formatting it using the string dot format. Now that the controller is updated, we can make the changes to the view to actually display the message. The view is going to be in the home folder in the and then the uh, about.aspx is the file. View data message. Now click the F5 button to start debugging. We can navigate to our home about and put the number 7 in. It's going to be using the value from the address bar to figure out what the ID should be. And that's due to how the routing is done. See if I put test, which is text, it doesn't it throws an error. Now we all know that those yellow screens of error 
are not appropriate things to be showing to users. So what you need to do is go into your web.config is add a custom errors element to the system.web element and then go ahead and click the F5 button. Once again, we'll navigate to the about 7 and see that 7 squared is 49. But let's go ahead and see what happens with text. Aha, we do get our error message.